welcome to another episode of The Upshot Project. Today we're going to be doing a video about how we survived long distance relationship. A long distance relationship. We've decided to create this video to help other people that might be in a long distance relationship as well and doesn't know what to do. Some of you might know that Hidden and I have been in a long distance relationship. We've been approximately like a total of 13 months apart and these 10 tips are how we survived those 13 months apart. So our first tip would be as simple as it is, keeping contact. So basically regular contact throughout every single day just to let each other know what is happening in each other's lives as well as just feeling a little bit closer so that way you don't feel like you're missing out on as much. Keeps everybody informed. So when it comes to keeping contact, this leads into our second tip. That's like four fingers. Tip number two is simply honesty. Just being open and discussing when you are feeling really good, when you are feeling really dad, dad? <laughs> when you feel like a dad. Like any relationship, you won't get very far without this. Because if you're feeling shit about something, just letting them know that that is actually the case, rather than pretending that, some, that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Just being open and making sure that everyone is on the same page really can help when you know, things are getting low because particularly in a long distance relationship. You need to normalize that feeling shit in a relationship is okay and everyone is going through it. I would also add that being honest with your partner about anything would just... It will make you feel that you're being closer with your partner because being open and honest with someone creates a bigger bond. And that's exactly what you need in a long distance relationship, just to feel closer to the other person and like feeling closer to another person, not only physically. We underestimate what feeling closer emotionally and mentally feels like. So point number two. Where's your extra one? Thank you. Is having a routine. The way that we did it was in the morning, we message each other and in the evening, we message each other. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was hard with the um, time differences, but it was in a routine that when I woke up, I knew that I was going to have a message of Hayden saying, hey, like, good night, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even though it was like, good night, I'm going to sleep, it's like that, mm -hmm. that, that thought that you were thinking of them just before going to sleep while they're waking up, it really can make like those little things can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thursdays and Sundays were approximately when we could call each other mm -hmm. and they, they were my favorite days of the week. Brings us into the fourth point of calling. Messages are always fun, even voice messages, uh, recorded videos, mm -hmm. they're all really good but actually calling and seeing each other adds so much. Mm -hmm. Also try to book a certain amount of time. Like, I mean for we can do a very good job of that. We, we, no, we but, talk for like hours. No, that, that's the thing because we knew we didn't have anything planned oh, true. after that. Because for myself, when Hayden was calling me at, as a surprise like that, most of the time I didn't have the time to enjoy the call because I knew I had something else or an appointment to go or whatever, so I wasn't really enjoying those kind of calls. <laughs> number five. <laughs> so, tip number five is acceptance. What we mean by that is that you need to accept the fact that this is your situation until things change. Mm -hmm. You need to accept that you are indeed in a long distance relationship and yes, of course, it's difficult. Is it the end of the world? No. Some days it might feel like it's the end of the world. I'll give you that. It's freaking hard sometimes. But by accepting that you are in this kind of situation, you're gonna feel better. Of course, it's easier to say than to do. Mm. Like some days you'll accept it, some other days you'll be like, no, ah, what's that? As soon as you start accepting a certain situation, that's when you start planning. Which leads into our next point. Right. Number six. Yes. Planning the day that you guys will reunite, and or at least planning for the opportunity when you'll be able to unite. Like, you know, the day that you buy the plane tickets or the day you get the visas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those days are huge. And just just planning to buy the plane tickets. Plan this together. Like, yeah. plan a video call just to find 
like the cheapest and the longest <laughs> <laughs> plane tickets. 36, 48 hours, doesn't really matter how as long as you get there. As long as you get there. <laughs> Just the fact that you and your partner are going to plan this future reunion together, it gives so much hope. So much. <laughs> Having an understanding that you want to be together years in advance really help what's happening in the moment. Mm -hmm. Which leads us into our next point. <laughs> next tip. Tip number seven is patience. You need to be patient. You gotta be patient with this, you gotta be patient with each other, you gotta be patient mm -hmm. with time. Because obviously you deal with like obviously the like distance differently, so the stresses and everything. It, particularly if you've planned, you'll be able to I guess compartmentalize the time mm -hmm. a little easier. Mm -hmm. It's very important to stay patient with the other one because obviously you are not going to live the same emotions at the same time. It's possible that one day you're on a high and, and everything is going well, but the other person at the, at the other side of the world is like, oh my god, this is so hard, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And it's totally normal. Let's not panic. You need to be patient with this person, even though it happens regularly. We all have different ways to deal with this kind of pain. Yeah, be patient with the other one. Sometimes it can be a pain. Tip number eight is sending gifts. When it comes to gifts, obviously if you're in a position to, to send gifts, awesome. If you're not, totally disregard the awesome stuff we're about to say. A small part of where your partner was from delivered straight to your door. Yes. And, it, and it, it felt that much closer. I don't know for you, but for me, when you were sending me give out gifts, I was like, oh my God, he touched it. I was like fangirling. <laughs> he breathed the air next yeah, to us. Ah, he wore it. He brought me so much closer to you. When I received a gift from Seoul, it came at a time where I usually was feeling a little bit meh. So receiving that gift really gave me a huge boost emotionally because you know, like actually receiving something that you touched. <laughs> yeah, true, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tip number nine for long distance relationships would be the fact that you actually live your life where you are. And in that sense, it's like you're not always on your phone, you're not always trying to contact each other. Even when there's no distance between you, you still need to give each other space to grow. And if you've got friends that want to go out, if you have sport, if you have work, actually live there. Mm -hmm. And the, but that's the whole point of planning is to have, or the whole point of a routine, sorry. Mm -hmm. The whole point of the routine is so that way you have those set times that you do talk to each other. But then you've also got times where you can experience life where you are mm -hmm. and you don't miss what is happening right now. Yeah. Number mm -hmm. 10 is all about fun. Yes. So, Sol and I would often play games. We had a couple of card games, but we also watched Netflix, Net, wow, Netflix, Netflix party together. So we would watch episodes and movies, we watch whole series together. We would video call, but then also have the movie up at the same time. It's and quite a system. The first time we did that, it felt like we were literally in the same room uh, watching it because- I remember. I cried at the end and it was it was not because of the movie. It was so refreshing. Oh, 100%. For me, I, like I, it just sort of felt like we were back back together just cr like crashing on the bed, watching TV and just chilling out. So, as we said in the beginning, these were our tips to get through distance relationship, but obviously it won't work with um, everyone and that's okay and I would add another tip talk about the strategy you want for like with your partner for like tips that you want in your relationship with your partner to get through this because we are sharing our tips with you guys but obviously if you have other ideas just share it with uh, your partner you can share it in the comments as well if it doesn't work it just doesn't work. Obviously long distance isn't for everyone. No, exactly. But at least you've tried it and you know that it's not for you and it's like any kind of relationship. And I think that's a message that we need to hear, then that we need to accept and that's all right. So that's our 10 tips plus souls for this video when it comes to surviving a long distance relationship regardless of pandemic or not. 
So if you enjoyed Hayden's drawing and the tips that we just gave you, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and you can also leave a comment. It will be a pleasure to answer to you guys. Thank you very much and see you next week. Do another episode of the long, of the long distance project. <laughs> so it'd be so much easier if we had like a projector, like just behind the camera, and no. I could just read it. Wait. But then you then you'd see my eyeballs. <laughs> Number five. It's a little dramatic. I would also tap like this skull is the crisp. I would also add that I've lost my point. Babe, <laughs> <laughs> it's two twos. Two twos or four. My like depending. It depends on your perception. Wait. Hey, you haven't started drinking it. I look like a alcoholic. <laughs> when you're a teenager and you're fangirling over a, a star and I don't know, and you really want to buy this piece of tissue that this star. <laughs> oh man, disregard that last bit because that sounds I've never, fucking homicidal. I've